I'm now joined now. I'm now joined by Mike Balco from New York City, his sports managing editor and the Daily National dot com. Um, thanks so much for joining us, sir. Uh, let's talk about me. the Super Bowl event. Uh, tell our international audience uh, what are the highlights that they should watch tonight. Well, they should obviously watch the game, but as your reporter was mentioning as you, as you were discussing, it's much more than just the game. It's almost a national holiday here in the U.S., from Super Bowl parties to the halftime show to the Super Bowl commercials. You know, the action on the field is one sort of game, and the action off the field for the casual fan is uh, something completely different. It's the one time that everyone in the U.S. almost seemingly is watching the same thing. Over 100 million probably in audience this year, if not a little bit more. But it's the thing that when you go into work the next day, everyone will have a, an opinion either on the game, on the commercials, on the halftime, on the food that they ate. So it's that type of event here in the U.S. when everyone can come together. And then this is not just an American sport anymore, right? It is expanding into Asia, into Europe, Absolutely. and even yeah. to China. It is expanding into China. There's certainly the, the China Arena Football League. The uh, U.S. and Roger uh, Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, has taken great lengths to broaden the scope of the National Football League as a property, as a sports entity, uh, doing games in London. The prospect of an expansion team, maybe in London, or an NFL team currently moving to London. But with the same way that the NBA has become a global sport, uh, Major League Baseball in Latin American countries and in Japan and some of the other Asian countries, the NFL while not slow to becoming an international game, certainly does not have that natural foothold that basketball or baseball, certainly f soccer, football, does around the rest of the country. So it's getting there, and China being one of those markets that it's looking to get into. Well, Mike, uh, what's unique about this year's halftime show? Because it's also a, a big event uh, for our audience around the world. Yeah, absolutely. And the big event this year is Justin Timberlake, certainly a global uh, star when it comes to music and acting. If you remember back in the early 2000s, he had a very infamous Super Bowl halftime appearance with Janet Jackson that turned into a big incident where there was uh, some nudity involved at the end of their performance where he pulled back Janet Jackson's shirt. Probably not going to happen this go around. They're certainly much more careful about scripting things and making sure that things like that don't happen. But the halftime show, Justin Timberlake, and it's really become a platform and a forum for some of the biggest pop music stars to present themselves. Last year with Lady Gaga, Pink is singing the national anthem this year. You know, you've had rock stars like Prince, Tom Petty, certainly Bruce Springsteen, and you two have done memorable halftime shows. So Justin Timberlake obviously has a new album out here in the U.S. and around uh -huh. the world, he's one of those stars that's looking to make even more of a name for himself and reach a bigger audience. Uh -huh. We'll see how this year's halftime show turns out. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you. Movie star Chris Wu is the first Chinese to have performed on the Super Bowl stage. He was featured in a pregame show. Let's hear his assessment of the Super Bowl and the American football games. 其实就是呃小时候刚来到这个北美这边就是呃那时候在呃学习嘛就读书然后其实每年这个时候还是挺大影响力就非常轰动因为这件事情确实呃就像就是呃北美这边他们非常的重视就像一个节日一样有点啊